Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. Always a pleasure to have you back. So we have been working our way through looking at the MakeCode Arcade extensions. And this is going to be a deep dive into the various extensions that I've used while building with MakeCode. Of course, if you're new to MakeCode, I would recommend you first check out my series that teaches you how to build games with MakeCode because this is an extension of that series. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new project because today... We're going to be looking at the darts extension. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this project darts. This is a pretty fun, um, easy to use extension when you want something that has gravity and projectiles. So you will find it by going to extensions. And it's this one right here that just says darts, a sprite with path projection. So you may remember a while back, I taught you guys how to code gravity in games. We made a basketball style game. So darts is a way to create games similar to that. But the nice thing about it is that a lot of the math, a lot of the science has already been calculated into it for you. So you still have the, par the parabola, right? You still have the parabolic curve when you throw something because gravity pulls it down. But it's already been calculated for you. And what's more than that is it has a nice little feature where it can create a path and show you where something's going to go, which is pretty cool. So once you add the darts extension, you'll see it now in the toolbox here. It just says darts. And these are the blocks you'll find. There's not a lot of blocks here because there's not a lot to this extension. This one right here creates the dart. So I want you to notice very similar to the regular sprite blocks. The only difference is darts are not normal sprites. So instead of saying sprite of kind player, it says dart of kind player. So darts are a variation on sprites. Up until now, the only real sprites we've worked with are regular sprites and projectiles, which are their own type of sprite, right? So darts are their own type of sprite. Okay, so well, now that we create it, so let's go ahead and give it an image. I could draw something, but just to keep it simple, I'm gonna grab one of the pre-made ball pictures, which are down here at the bottom. And now that we have it, first thing I want you to notice is that they automatically put it in the bottom right corner. You can always move it if you want to, but by default, they put it in the bottom right corner because they're assuming you're going to be using this as a throwing game and they want to allow you to room to have that curve, right? If you click on the plus sign here, you can change its position. So if you want it to start somewhere else, you can change the, the numbers right here. But normally it will start in the bottom left corner. All right, the other blocks. Control with arrow keys, stop, throw, trace. Trace is a big one. So let's just go ahead and throw that on right now. Trace is really what distinguishes this from if you were to build your own throwing game using what I taught you guys in that gravity lesson. So I want you to notice that white dot. That is the trace that they're talking about. This is showing the path that the ball is going to go on. So right now, it's just kind of going to go off screen. But we can change that in a minute here. So control with arrow keys. This is the movement controls for aiming. So this is a, a little bit different. In the program that I showed you, there wasn't really much aiming involved. This time, we can actually aim the ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the arrow keys. And if I go left and right with my arrow keys, it goes up and down. So please notice that. You can see if you look at the little icon below my picture here, what buttons I'm pressing, right? So if I press the left and the right, it goes up or down. So that's, that's deciding the angle that I'm tossing at. If I press up or down, it goes further if I press up and it goes less far if I press down. This is changing the power. This is changing how fast I throw it. So up and down is changing the power. Left and right is changing the angle. And with these controls, I can aim for anything on the screen, which makes us great for a target-based game. Um, you may, when you see this, this might kind of remind you of Angry Birds. I think that's probably what they were inspired by when they wrote this extension. So right now, I still can't throw it yet, though. I have to put that in the code. If I go to darts... We have stop dart and we have throw dart. So I'm going to use throw dart and I'm going to put the throw dart inside of when a button is pressed. So now when I press the a button, it will throw the dart. Let's take a look at it. So if I throw it right now, it just goes off screen. I'm going to reset it. 
I'm going to aim it now. So I'm using the left button to change the angle, using up to change the power. Now when I shoot it, it goes up there and it follows that path. That's the real benefit of having the path. Do you have to have the path when you use this extension? Absolutely not. That's why it's its own separate block. You can even turn it off. So what some people like to do is they like to have the path on for part of the game and maybe have the path off for a different part of the game. So you could do that if you wanted to, right? Okay, let's see. Uh, with the arrow keys, this is also an on-off thing you can adjust. Okay, so other than that, you've got these blocks down here, which are pretty helpful for just tweaking little things. So you have set and you have change, and then you have the one for grabbing values, right? So when the game starts, do I want my angle to be like this? Probably not in a throwing game, right? You probably want to start with an angle that's higher up. Usually the angle that I like to start with is 45. 45 degrees, you know, because you have zero, basically. You have 90 if it's here. So 45 gives you that nice diagonal. It's the halfway. So if you set it to 45, that's a good starting point. You may also want to set um, what, what you want the power to be. So you'll see with the drop down, there's other options. There's power. There's tracing time. There's trace color, there's gravity, there's wind. I've never actually used the wind. I noticed it's here twice. So I'm assuming that would refer to drag. I don't know why it appears here twice, but I'm assuming wind would create a drag for it. We can play around with that and see what happens. But yeah, normally what I would do is I would select a power and an angle just to start off with. You can kind of decide what the players should start with before they start adjusting 100 really strong. So that probably wouldn't make sense for a throwing game, but maybe 70 is not bad, right? So then from there, of course, the player can adjust it themselves, so on and so forth. I do love the fact that there is an option for trace time. That's pretty cool. So you can make the curve bigger or shorter depending on the time you put here. So if I only want it to show the first five seconds, okay, it's still showing most of it. Let's say the first two seconds. There we go, it's shorter now, right? I could do just the first one second. So if I'm only showing one second, then really the player is gonna have to figure out what's gonna happen or when gravity's gonna pull it back down, right? So it's kind of deciding how much help I'm giving the player with the tracing by changing the seconds. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, other drop down stuff that we had. Gravity, of course, you can change. Um, you can change the color to make sure that it's visible against whatever background you're using, right? So if you have a light blue sky in the background, white might be hard to see. So you might wanna change the color. So you can adjust all this stuff. Pretty straightforward. From here, you can basically build whatever type of game you want to, where throwing at an angle or throwing and aiming is going to be important. So of course, my brain immediately goes to an Angry Birds style game, but that could be pretty difficult to code as far as having things balance on each other. That would be pretty difficult, but you could do something similar where it's just targets, right? You could have targets along the edge here that you're trying to hit. Maybe they're moving targets. And maybe when you hit one, you get a point and it disappears and respawns somewhere else on the screen. Maybe you could do something like that, right? So you could do that using skills that I've already taught you guys as far as having um, random position changes and all that stuff is all things that we've learned in previous lessons. So this would be a great way to turn this into a game. Um, I would suggest if you were to use something like this, stop dart isn't really super important, but you could use it if you want to. Um, maybe when it hits something, the dart stops moving. Normally what I would do is if it hits something, the dart would just get destroyed, right? So if I was building a game like this, I would probably do two things. I would probably create an on destroyed block for what to happen when it gets destroyed. And when it gets destroyed, I would have it create a new one. So I basically copy all this code and put it in there. Or to make my program a little bit easier, I might just create a function for that. I can call the function create ball, put all this stuff in the function, and then have that function happen at the beginning of the game. And then also when the ball gets destroyed, 
And I could even give the ball, the dart, an auto-destroy. So auto-destroy, I don't know, remember if we've talked about this or not. Auto-destroy is something that projectiles have, but technically the darts are not projectiles. So I would have to give it auto-destroy if I wanted to have that. So basically what auto-destroy means is that if it leaves the screen, it will automatically get destroyed. And that can save up memory, especially if you have multiple darts in the game. But in this case, it will allow you to automatically go again because a new ball will get created. So I'll show you what I mean. It leaves the screen and there's a new one, right? And now if I wanted to, I could put lives, you know, for the player, depending on what they're doing. You know, maybe they only have so many throws they're allowed to do. There's a lot that you could do with this as a starter program. Um, so feel free to use this and build a game with it. I would love to see what you guys make. If you do make something, make sure you click the share button, uh, change, name your game, hit the share project, copy the link and put it in the comments so I can check out your dark game. Before I let you go, I do want to show you guys something though. So I had a student, this is a couple years old. I had a student who made a game with this extension that looks nothing like this. And this is why I love extensions because they give you a good foundation. They give you a lot of good code you can work with. But you don't have to use it the way they designed it, right? So let me show you guys this game. This will be our last thing I show in this video. The game is called Golf Balls. You use left and right button to determine where the ball goes. Oh, I forgot to mention that you can't stop moving and you bounce off walls. So this game is using the dart extension. As you can tell from the white, the white dots there are the path, right? There is a countdown, so I'm kind of wasting time talking right now. But the goal of this game is to beat all the levels before time runs out. So to play, I just aim where I want the ball to go, and I press the A button to hit it, and it goes that way. And it will just keep bouncing around. So if I want to change direction, I just have to give it a new direction and hit it again. So this was a very creative way of using the darts game because I want you to notice I, I'm not really falling in this game. I'm just moving in straight lines. It's basically a golf game, a mini golf style game. There's no curve. There's no parabola. There's no gravity. The goal is just to get to the end of the maze. So you're playing from a top down view instead of a side perspective view. I'm sure when they designed this extension, they never expected anybody to use it this way. And that's what I thought was so creative about it, that a student came up with this idea all on his own, just from playing around. He was playing around with the extension. He was exploring it. He was having fun. And he learned that you could do this. And so he built an entire game around it. This is probably the hardest level for me because you got to get in these little holes in the wall. Ah. Aiming is difficult. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, I won't finish the game, but I will put a link to it in the description of this video. So if you want to play golf balls for yourself and see if you can beat all the levels before time runs out, have fun. Um, so yeah, I hope you learned something new in this video. If you learned something new, please click that like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And if you've made something you want to show off, please share those links in the comments where I can see them and people can play your games. All right. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.